The Facebook ads platform has some of the best machine learning that's available in the PPC space. Now you might not have as much control over some of your bids as you would on something, say Google or LinkedIn, but Facebook does have a handful of different bidding strategies that will combine with the machine learning to try to get you the best results for your campaigns. Now it's been a while since we put out a video about Facebook's bidding strategies, and that one's a little out of date. So we're gonna go through all the different bidding strategies that are available on the Facebook platform and help you determine which one might make sense for you. If you've run any sort of PPC campaigns, specifically on Google Ads, even Microsoft Advertising, a lot of the Facebook Ads bidding strategies are gonna feel pretty similar in how they function and what the goals are gonna be. We're gonna use Facebook's help articles to fill in some of the gaps for this video because it didn't make sense for me to make PowerPoint presentations if Facebook has already done it for me. On the bid strategy pages, we can see that there are three different types of bidding strategies, but in total, there are going to be five separate bid strategies we can use for Facebook ads. Looking at the three different types, we start off with spend-based, then we have goal-based, and the third is going to be manual bidding. So let's run through these real quick and talk about what each type is, and then I'll show you how you would set them up in the Facebook ads interface. Let's first talk about the spend-based bidding options. Both of these are going to be default bidding strategies depending on which type of campaign you're using. Highest volume is intended to maximize the delivery and conversions you can get by spending your entire budget. Highest value focuses on spending your entire budget and trying to get you as much conversion value possible for that daily ad spend. If you're familiar with the Google Ads bidding strategies, highest volume is effectively comparable to maximize conversions and highest value is going to be comparable to maximize conversion value. The text I have highlighted now is one of the big things to watch out for. They're both intended to spend your entire budget every single day. And then on top of that, they're gonna try to get you as much conversion volume or value as possible. Now, depending on how much conversion volume you have, that might be a highly profitable return or it might be something that falls well below your goals. That's where we jump down to this second section down here for goal-based bidding. Here you get to set a cost or a value you want to achieve for your campaigns. There are two bidding strategies we have available, cost per result goal and ROAS goal or return on ad spend. So here for cost per result, they are gonna strive to keep costs around the amount regardless of the market conditions. That's a fancy way of saying, we're gonna try and hit your target cost per result within the campaigns. And this matches up very closely to target CPA bidding in Google Ads. The second option for ROAS bidding, they're gonna to aim to keep your returns around the average that you set over the course of the campaign. So again, this is effectively return on ad spend bidding, and Facebook is gonna to try to hit the profitability metrics that you want for your campaigns. Now, the last option down here below is manual bidding, and that's gonna use bid cap. And for this, you as the advertiser control how much you bid across the ad auctions. Now this is not a bid for a cost per result or a return on ad spend. This is effectively the same as manual CPC in Google Ads. You are capping the amount you're willing to bid to enter the auction. No results are taken into account here. It's all based on what you want your bid to be just to enter the auction. Now that we know what they are, let me go show you how to set each of these up in a couple different accounts we have in Facebook. For these to work, I have to use live client accounts. So I've skipped ahead a few steps in this builder process just so we don't have to blur as much out. But effectively, I've created a new sales objective campaign and I'm on the ad set level because all bidding strategies live at the ad set level. Now, unfortunately, Facebook does not really have a section here that says bid strategy. Instead, you need to use a combination of a couple different settings to make sure that you're using the bid strategy you want. Here I'm using the website conversion location, which is the most traditional. Send somebody to a landing page, have them convert, send to a thank you page, all that good stuff. Now to utilize the highest volume bid strategy or effectively maximize conversions, you really don't need to do anything. Performance goal is where we're gonna set this initial setting and it's gonna default to maximize number of conversions. That means that you're already opted into highest volume bidding. Now, if we did click any of the different dropdowns in here, you'll see maximize value of conversions is grayed out. We cannot use this, but there are other goals down below to maximize landing page views, link clicks, daily unique reach, 
and number of impressions. Now, although these are all other goals for Facebook, these will still run on a highest volume bid strategy. But rather than trying to maximize the number of conversions, they're going to maximize the respective stat here, whether it's link clicks, landing page views, or any of the others. So by default, everything is going to go to highest volume for whatever the result is you have for your ad set. We'll skip down past the data set, which basically tells Meta where you want your conversion action to live. You then need to set your conversion event, which is important because when you're maximizing the number of conversions, you need to tell it which conversion you want to optimize for. Each ad set can only optimize for one conversion event unless you have a custom conversion or a custom event that combine multiple different conversion events on your website. So make sure whatever you choose for this conversion event section is what you want Facebook to optimize for while using the highest volume bid strategy. Now, if you want to start using the cost per result or target CPA bidding, you would just need to add whatever your target CPA is into this optional field down here. So if I had a cost per lead goal of $100, I would just add 100 in there. And now Meta will optimize for that $100 cost per conversion for me. Now you'll notice when I added in the cost per result, I not only had that applied here and the text below changed, but additionally, now there is a bid strategy section down here at the bottom. I'm opted into cost per result goal, but this is the only way that you can get bid cap to show up. And then if you want to opt into manual bidding, you would just click the button next to that. The field name up here will change from cost per result goal to bid control. And now you would set whatever you want your maximum bid to be to enter the Facebook auction. So all three of those bid strategies, highest volume, cost per result goal, or target CPA, and bid cap are all different layers of the maximized number of conversions performance goal, just with augmented settings. Now I'm in a different account. I've created another new sales campaign, and I'm in the new ad set control settings. As you can see here, we've got a catalog sale. Performance goal is now maximize value of conversions. Now, the reason I couldn't do this in the other campaign is because that pixel, that business, does not have revenue associated with each of the different conversion actions. So if you're not passing in revenue data, you will not be able to use maximize value of conversions as your bid strategy. Additionally, if you are passing in conversion value, you can still use maximize number of conversions as your bid strategy or highest volume if that's your preference. But for now, let's say we want to use maximize value or highest value, which is what will show up in the bid strategy column in the interface. As you can see, by default, it's already setting us up for that. But if you want to add a ROAS goal, you just come down here and you add it into this field. Now for this formatting, you can tell it looks a little bit different. There's a decimal point in there, and that's not super common for ROAS fields. So let's hop back into the help article real quick, because down here in the ROAS goal section, it gives a different formatting example. If you want to produce $110 in revenue on $100 of spend, that's a 110% return. So you would set your ROAS control at 1.100. So what that means is that Facebook ROAS controls are done in full integers, not in percentage points. So if I want my return on ad spend to be 300, I would set this value at three. Effectively, you're removing two decimal points from the percentage that you want for your return on ad spend and setting that as your ROAS goal. If you were to come in here and set your ROAS goal at 300, what that's actually gonna optimize for is about 30,000% in return. That's a little bit more than you're probably working on. So make sure that you're paying attention to what the formatting is here and you're only setting the ROAS goal as high as you need it to be. Now, Facebook does give an overview of what these bid strategies are best for and what to watch out for. So the first two are highest volume and highest value. So maximizing the number of results. It says that this is best for getting the most volume of results if you don't have strict CPA needs. It's great for spending your entire daily budget and it's fine for advertisers who may not have a clear KPI or goal in mind. I would agree with that. It's great for spending your full daily budget. And although I don't really run into advertisers who don't have a clear KPI or at least an idea of what it means, I have seen highest volume perform really well for accounts without setting a CPA target. So depending on how much conversion volume you have coming through, might make sense to start off with highest volume. And then if you're not seeing the results you need, you can jump down to cost per result goal. 
But something to pay attention to is that you're probably going to have higher costs than what you might want to tolerate for a certain CPA or CPM because you haven't set any guardrails. Now, like I just said, I've actually seen it perform pretty well a lot of times, so don't assume that it's going to perform poorly. I personally have actually seen highest volume and highest value perform better than their equivalents, maximize conversions and maximize conversion value on Google. Facebook tends to be a little bit more efficient in my experience. Not to say it will be for you, but these are not categorical no's just from the start. Now, maximize conversion value, again, going to spend your entire daily budget, try to get you as much conversion value as possible. But one thing is that it does require your pixel to be passing back conversion value information into the platform. You'll remember the first account I looked at, highest value was not a bid strategy we could use. It also says that it requires a good distribution of values across different products. I've honestly not seen that be a huge problem if you don't have a wide variety of products and wide variety of values, it's still going to try and optimize for your target return on ad spend. Now the modifiers of both of these, so cost per result goal and ROAS goal, both of those are best if you have a target performance metric that you need to keep in mind, whether it's cost per conversion or it's profitability for each of the different conversions that you have. The biggest problems here are going to be if you don't have enough conversion volume, to support your target CPA goal or ROAS goal, volume is likely going to go down. They're going to be throttling the spend if it's not hitting the goals that you have in place. This is just the same as any of the other platforms. It is going to try and hit your targets that you've set, but without enough data, it simply can't optimize for those events. So if you start running into low conversion periods and you're struggling to get any sort of data through, it might make sense to shift back to a highest volume or highest value strategy to get more through because it simply can't learn enough, be efficient enough to make those campaign settings work. And then lastly is bid cap. This is considered an advanced strategy by Meta, which I would tend to agree with that. I don't know very many people who still use bid cap, but they're good for advertisers who use internal bidding or lifetime value models. And you really need to control how much you bid into Meta auctions. But the downsides here is that it does not lean into any of Facebook's machine learning to try and get you any sort of conversion value or profitability performance out of your campaigns. You're only controlling the bid to enter the auction. Everything else after that is up in the air. I personally would not recommend bid cap to just about anybody that I work with. There are definitely lots of people that it's good for, but for the average advertiser, I think having any sort of highest value, highest volume, TCPA or ROAS goals are probably going to be the best bid strategies for you to use. Overall, there's not quite as many bid strategies on Facebook as there are elsewhere, but they do match up pretty closely. And as I've said before, Facebook has some pretty good machine learning. So as long as you're generating regular conversions and passing back a good amount of data into the system, you're probably going to be best off using a conversion focused bid strategy with or without targets. And there's almost certainly going to be a bid strategy that works for just about every advertiser. If you have any additional questions about any of the Facebook bid strategies or anything else on the Met Ads platform, leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.